Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's Church on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, March 21st in the year 2021. We are so glad that you can join us for this service. You can follow the liturgy along by clicking the link below and that'll take you to our bulletin and you can just see the service there. Alternately, if you wish, you can open your prayer book to page 351 and follow along from there. Most of the service will be there. Now let us prepare for worship with some quiet contemplation as we listen to the opening prelude.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you to eternal life. Amen. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray almighty God you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of all sinners grant your people grace to love what you command and to desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of <clears throat> the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I shall forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
Happy holiday, who walk in the Lord, the Lord. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Many a time have they fought against me from my youth up. May Israel now say, Yea, many a time have they vexed me from my youth up. But they have not prevailed against me. The flowers plowed upon my back and made long furrows. But the righteous Lord hath hewn the snares of the ungodly in pieces. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to the worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am. There will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. 
No, it is for the reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was, a thun it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now it is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Good morning. You know, I don't know about you, but there is one doctor that makes me most anxious to go see. No, it's not that doctor we all need to start seeing after we turn 50, nor is it my general practitioner, nor is it any of the other specialties that might normally flash to your mind, like the dentist. No, the doctor that makes me the most anxious to go see is the optometrist. And I'll tell you why. Because invariably, I'm there sitting in the chair, and the technician says to me, number one or number two? Number two or number three? Number three or number four? Going back and forth between these lenses. And, you know, I feel such pressure to make such a big, momentous decision. After all, I'm going to be stuck with these glasses for at least the next year. And so I want to make sure that I get it right. And I'm just sure they've written down somewhere in my file that this guy is a hard guy to make up his mind. I'm like, could we go back to two again? I'm not sure. Maybe I missed something. Now, I'm sharing this confession with you, not because it is the season of Lent, but because I think we could be forgiven for having a slightly similar experience as we've moved through the Gospels these last few weeks. We've been given different glimpses of Jesus, and we're trying to pull them together into some cogent vision. On the first week, it was the tempted in the wilderness. Do we understand Jesus better as tempted in the wilderness, living with the very real temptations that you and I know in our own lives? Or is, the, is it the Jesus in the second week that talks about self-denial and taking up our cross and following him? Or do we like the Jesus of the third week, the cleansing of the temple? And, or is it more preferable for us to focus on last week's gospel about being lifted up for the healing of people. Who is this person, this Jesus that is coming into focus? We are just like the Greeks in the beginning of today's gospel. We want to see Jesus. And just like for the Greeks there comes this parable, so too it comes to you and us because Jesus responds with this quick teaching. Just as a grain must fall to the earth and die in order to bring forth fruit, so too must the Son of Man, so too must you and I, if we are to bring forth new life in this world. We don't give a lot of thought into what goes into the food that we eat. Whether it's meat or fruit or vegetables, whether it's bread or cheese or milk, there is a lot that goes into making it possible for us to have all of these things on our table, all of these good things to consume. But it is a process that brings all of them forth. It is the process of change and transformation that reveals them to be what we need to survive. Consider the apple. You and I can easily eat an apple, bite into it, cut it up, and just avoid the seeds without a second thought. But did you know that each apple has on average between five and eight seeds, and that each one of those seeds, if planted, could produce over the course of its lifetime over a thousand more apples. 
When Jesus is talking about the seed of the grain going into the earth and bringing forth fruit, he's talking about how his life and witness and ministry is generative. That is to say, it causes ripples that go out into the lives of his followers, into the lives of those who hear him, into the lives of those who read these texts, into the lives of you and me today. What then is the Spirit saying to us in this parable? What is Jesus pointing to about the course of our own lives, we who would be followers of Jesus? Well, just like the Greeks, as I said, we're looking to see Jesus. Just like the Greeks, we want to understand. And I know it has been particularly difficult for us in this last year to always be able to see Jesus in the midst of the anxiety and concern and confusion that's been going on around us. To be sure, there have been no shortage of voices clamoring for our attention. To be sure, there's been no shortage of those who are willing to offer their opinions about how we are to understand what is happening in this time and in the world today. But to be sure, I believe that Jesus has been as clear and as present to us in this time as he was over 2,000 years ago. Here then are a few places that I've seen Jesus this past year. I've seen Jesus in the members of this church who work at the local hospitals. These are people who go in day in and day out to provide the care and compassion needed for those who are fighting COVID-19 for those who are fighting every other illness that's out there. They put themselves at risk to help others heal and recover. And they are more than just being the medical professionals because they've had to stand in place for family because nobody else has been able to go into the hospital. What has been most extraordinary to me is the number of these people who are members of St. Peter's who call me when there is somebody in the hospital. They call and let me know that that person is there and that that person wants us to pray for them. And they call and let me know that they will go down and visit them as often as they can to hold their hands and to reassure them. It is an incredible image of Christian love that these people put themselves in the room with others who could infect them. And yet, because of the compelling love of Christ, like that grain that goes into the earth, they die to their selfishness and they produce the fruit of selflessness. I've seen Jesus in other places too, in the extraordinary commitment of members of this congregation to, to keep the little cupboard out on the street corner well stocked and available to members of our community. To be sure, there are a lot of people who've lost their jobs and are dealing with difficulty, difficult economic realities. But it has been even more amazing to see the members of this congregation who choose to put themselves at some risk to go around to different grocery stores to get the best deals that they can and to bring food in and to stock the the, uh, stairs on the Mulberry Street side of our parish hall to make sure that there is enough food for everyone. I've seen Jesus show up in our phone tree as a parish. Yes, there have been a few people who've said, you don't need to call me. But what has been amazing is that the people who are captains of each portion of this phone tree have endeavored to keep up with about 10 members of this congregation, to keep them informed about what's going on here at St. Peter's, and to keep me informed about what others need 
and what's going on in the lives of members that I just can't see because we're not coming to able to physically gather here in the church. I've seen Jesus move an artist in our congregation to document the tremendous loss of life that we've experienced not only just in this world, but in our country as well. Mark has done some amazing exhibits, and I hope you were able to come here just a few weeks ago and walk through and see what the Spirit has inspired him to mark the lives of those who have died to COVID-19. I've seen Jesus in this staff that I have the privilege of serving with. To be sure, you need to understand and fully uh, comprehend that neither TJ, Kelly, or I went to seminary or college for television production. The learning curve has been steep, and TJ has thrown himself incredibly into this task of putting together this webcast on the internet, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Kelly has worked tirelessly in the office to keep our database up to date so that we're able to connect to the members of our community. And all of the clergy have tried their best to keep tabs on all of our members. I've seen Jesus in the willing sacrifice and commitment of all of these people to serve this parish and all of its members. And I've been astounded. I doubt any of these people know that they have borne Christ in themselves. I doubt it's something that they consciously think about from when one day to the next. And yet I am sure and confident that you, like me, have looked at these things and thought to ourselves, wow, what commitment, what love, what dedication they show. Their actions have showed us not only a glimpse of Jesus, but they have also fueled the hope that we have needed to make it through this last year. And you see, that's the thing that John's gospel is really trying to teach you and teach me. In these glimpses we've seen of Jesus, in this Jesus who is tempted, in this Jesus who calls us to a life of service and self-denial, in this Jesus who cleanses the temple, in this Jesus who is lifted up for healing, in this Jesus who foretells even his own sacrifice, this Jesus demonstrates who he is, the embodiment of God's love. John's gospel, to be sure, is not concerned about giving us an image and a glimpse of how Jesus pays for our sins as some type of ransom. John's gospel is not about teaching us the vagaries of substitutionary atonement. The words themselves don't even appear in the gospel. And you get an extra 50 cents if you understood what I just said. John's gospel is about dying to selfishness and finding a new way of life that comes from living into the love that God has for us and by sharing that love into the lives of others giving ourselves in service, and building relationship. That's what John wants us to understand about Jesus. That's what John wants us to understand about the crucifixion and the resurrection. It is not about something just for me. It is about a hope that God has for creating a whole new human experience human beings willing to rise above just living for themselves, human beings willing to live into relationship. And so this begs the question for all of us, we who are part of the body of Christ, do others see Jesus in us? What are the ripples right now that are coming to you from others? 
I, I read a thing this past week that suggested that instead of struggling by, um, to fall asleep by counting sheep, Instead, a much more worthy activity, something that would gladden not only our hearts, but yield a much deeper spiritual good. Perhaps we should count the people in our lives that we are thankful for. And as we're struggling to sleep, instead to focus on praying for them, giving thanks for them, and wishing them well. What an incredible way to respond to the generous love that others have shown us. How then can we as the people of God help others see Jesus? How can we put out ripples and generate more love in this world? Our calling is just like that simple parable to be like the seed, the seed that is Jesus Christ that goes willingly into the ground, into the tomb, and bears much fruit. The seed that calls you and me to let go of the things that are so constricting our own self-focused lives and to see ourselves as being someone in relationship connected one to another, dying to self, and being born again into the new life of Christ. Joan Chichester recently wrote, we are here to see the present with godliness so that others may someday reap the best of what we have sowed. An incredibly powerful sentence that gives us a witness of our call as people of faith. Whatever images you are drawn to from the life of Jesus, may we all embrace the call that comes to us of ministry and service. And as we look at the cross, the symbol that is all the worst that humanity can do, may we know it to be the powerful witness of the love of God and our calling to be purveyors of compassion and mercy, of grace and hope, of love in our own lives. May it be so. Amen.
prayers of the people. As the long night of winter gives way to the dawn of a new life in spring, so let our hearts be open to the love of God, which embraces all people and compels us to engage the world with the good news. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. Let us pray for the Church of God that this holy season of renewal may bring forth a new vitality for the work of healing and reconciliation. I invite your prayers for the Church. We remember especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our own bishop, and all the congregations, people, and clergy of the Diocese of Delaware. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. Let us pray for our country that she may be healed of systemic racism, crass materialism, and social inequities, and may live fervently toward forming a more perfect union. I invite your prayers for our country. For Joseph, our president, for John, our governor, for Theodore, our mayor. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. Let us pray for those in need, be it material, physical, or spiritual, that the love of God made flesh may fill the hungry with good things and raise up those who are bowed down. I invite your prayers for those in need. Remember especially Primeros Passos, the Community Resource Center, Feed the Children Heart and Soul. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. For the sick in mind, body, or spirit, for those with substance use and mental health disorders, for those infected with COVID-19, for those who are commended to our prayers, especially Bill Bernhardt, Bob Werner, Carol Decatur, Charlie, Michael Cote, Jean Richardson, Jean Keats, Mac McMahon, Barbara Comroy, Ianthe Prawl, Frida Burton, Drew and Susan, Joyce Gleason, the Kamanu family, Jerry Williams, Colleen and Baby, Dale Miller and Hugo Seta, Madison, Barbara McAndrew, Susan Krager, Eileen Krager, Peggy Levescu, Joseph Olson, nephew of Ted Olson, Liz Angus, niece of Stephen Schreiber, Michael Cook, son-in-law of Angie Rummel, Ann Marson, the mother of Joanne Marson, and Joseph Marson, the brother of Joanne Marson. And for those whom we carry our hearts, especially those on our extended parish prayer list. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. For those other concerns and prayers which we hold in our hearts and now pause to lift up silently or aloud. For eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open to the marvelous works of God. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. For those who have gone beyond human sight with hope in Jesus, crucified and risen. And for all those whose faith is known to God alone, that they may live in the light of peace eternal. Light of God, shine in our hearts and in our world. And bring forth new life. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of serious sickness, we flee to you for comfort and relief. Deliver us, we implore you, from our peril. 
Give strength and skill to those who minister to the sick. Prosper and guide those seeking to discover a cure. And grant that recognizing how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share the peace. Now a couple quick announcements uh, this morning. I just want to let you know that uh, next week we'll be releasing uh, registration opportunities for our uh, sunrise service at the Pilot Town Cemetery on Easter Sunday. And also for the Garden Vigil, watch overnight from Monday, Thursday to Good Friday morning. For the Garden Vigil, uh, we'll be forced to limit it to two people at a time. And you can come in the back door uh, the new back door that's been created off of 3rd Street, and come in for your time to sit with uh, Jesus through the evening. Uh, you'll need to complete a questionnaire online in order to register for that event. If you don't have access to um, a computer or can't easily do that, you can also come into the office and see Kelly, and she'll be glad to help, up, help you out. For the Easter Sunday service, you're going to need to bring a chair with you, and we will be parking uh, around the loop and along Pilot Town Road um, uh, in order to accommodate everyone. Uh, that event will be limited to about 100 people, so if you wish to join us, please sign up early. Uh, the announcement will come out next Thursday in our weekly e-blast, uh, and then I believe the uh, Easter Sunday um, uh, registration will drop uh, at the same time as the Monday Thursday. If you have any questions, feel free to give the office a call. Also, I just want to remind you that our Lenten series will be continuing and will uh, be culminating this week on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, Carlisle Gill and Carol Zorick will be presenting an overview of the uh, program that they've started here at St. Peter's and uh, about from the National Church about reaching out to become the beloved community. So if you would like to join us, but you haven't had uh, an opportunity to uh, sign up for the course, but you'd like to know more, this is a great opportunity to check it out. I hope you will join us. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, which is found in your bulletin or on page 369 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your light. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who've looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate, celebrate his, his death, death and, and resurrection as we, we await, await the day, day of his coming. coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal, that the grace of this holy communion Make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank, thank you, you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this, your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>